Hi, in this video we'll be amending our Siemens S7-1200 PLC code to send high boxes to the right in factory I.O. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the second part of this video training for the factory I.O. conveyor box sorting setup and programming the Siemens F7-1200 PLC. Let's get straight to it. So let's start factory I.O. and see where we left off. So you can see the pallets travel down the entry conveyor and the first one enters the small loader conveyor. And once the next pallet reaches the beam pallet sensor, everything comes to a halt, as the pallet loaded needs to transfer right or left, depending on the height of the box. So let's enter the ladder logic for that now. And from now on, where I can, I'll just call it the program instead of ladder logic. Now, before we move on, I'm going to make things a little simpler by allowing just large boxes onto the entry conveyor so that we only need to write a program to transfer boxes to the right. Once we've done that, it shouldn't be too difficult to amend the program to incorporate small boxes going left as well. So let's stop factory IO and change the type of boxes the emitter produces. Now, if we right click on the emitter and select part to emit, then deselect all but the large boxes and click to the side of the emitter options, then we save the emitter properties. Oops, I need to go back in and also increase the max time between boxes being emitted so that it gives me more time to explain what's happening. Okay, nine should be fine. Now let's start factory IO again and see those changes. Good. We can see there is more time between pallets being emitted and also the boxes all appear to be large ones as expected. So that's working okay. Let's stop factory IO and go offline on the Siemens TIA portal. So now we need to add in some logic that checks to see if a high box is detected while loading is taking place. And when it is, we can then transfer right. So under the loading network, we can add a normally open contact for the beam high sensor, input 0.0, .0 and use that to set the internal coil M0.4, which we can then use in a while to transfer the high boxes to the right. Now let's add the logic to check if we should transfer right. First, let's add another network in between network two and three, and this will become network three, and we'll call it transfer. And in the network, we need to place a falling edge trigger that checks to see when the internal bit M0.0 .0 loading goes from true to false, i.e. a pallet is fully loaded and ready to transfer right, which can then set the internal bit M0.2 transferring right. So let's do that under bit logic operation, scroll down and select F trig and place it in network three. Select OK for the second data block. Then on the CLK input to the block, add input 0, 0.0 loading. Then on the output side, we need to add a normally open contact with the block's Q address, just as we did with the RTRIG data block. So select data block two in the tag list, then Q. There we go. Now we need to add in the high box internal bit. So bring another normally open contact down and type in M0.0 
point four for the high box. Then add an output coil and address it M zero point two for transferring right and change it to a set coil. So let's recap on what's happening. Once a pallet has loaded, M0.0 .0 is reset, causing the CLK input on Ftrig to go from true to false. And as we already have the high box set to true, when this happens, we set the internal bit M0.2 transferring right, which can be used to engage the motor on the loader that brings up the yellow bed and drives the chains, sending the pallet to the right. So last thing to do is scroll down and in the outputs network, enter the internal bit M0.2 to activate Q0.4, the transfer right coil. Great, that's all done. Now let's download the program to the PLC, then run the program and see what happens. Let's go online and start monitoring, then start factory IO. OK, pallets are travelling down the entry conveyor and entering the small loader conveyor. The pallet is loaded and the yellow bed and chains rise and tries to move the pallet to the right. But two things appear to be wrong with the program. Firstly, the right conveyor is not running, creating friction between the pallet and the right conveyor. So the pallet is struggling to move off the loader. Secondly, if the pallet has not yet exited the loader, then another pallet should not be allowed to enter the loader. So let's stop factory IO and make a change to the program to solve this. Let's scroll down and go offline. Then to make life easier at this stage, let's just start the right conveyor running by adding a branch and then the output coil Q0.6, which will just turn the conveyor on as soon as factory IO is started. We can make modifications to this later when we decide the logic behind starting and stopping the right conveyor. Now let's download the modified program to the PLC and see what happens. OK, let's go online and start monitoring. And let's start factory I.O. This time, let's zoom in to the loader and get a close up of what's happening. I like the fact that uh, as you get closer to the conveyors, the sound of the motors and rollers working get progressively louder. Now we can see the first pallet travels on the right conveyor successfully. However, the next pallet traveling along the entry conveyor is not able to enter the loader because the yellow base has not disengaged and pallets start to stack up on the entry conveyor. Zooming in, you can see the yellow transfer base is still engaged in the vertical position. So we need to get those to disengage to stop the chains rotating and go down below the small loader conveyor rollers. So let's stop factory IO zoom back out and consider the changes required. I'm just going to save the program, which we really should do more often and go offline. OK, to disengage the yellow base transfer and stop the chains rotating right, we need to reset M0.2, which in turn disengages the output coil Q0.4. And we need to do that once the pallet on the loader has exited the loader completely, which can be detected by the reflector sensor situated on the right conveyor next to the loader. Now these sensors are always a state true. So when a pallet is detected and passes by, the sensor output is false. 
Therefore, we need to detect the rising edge when the pallet has passed the sensor completely. So let's enter the ladder logic for that now. So let's scroll up to the transfer network and enter a new branch. Then we can select an R-trig data block, which is the third data block we've used so far. And then enter by selecting OK. The input to the data block on the CLK should be input 0 0.6, which is the at right entry input. And to ensure the rising edge works as it should, we use a normally open contact on its output and select the data blocks queue. I'll get it from the tag list. So let's scroll down to the bottom of the list for DB3. OK. And then we can reset the output coil internal bit M0.2 transferring right. That's done. OK, let's scroll down to check that we have disengaged the output transfer right. OK. So let's download the amended program to the PLC. Select load and let's monitor the program and start up factory IO. Now we'll zoom in, see what happens as the first pallet passes the reflector sensor. We see the input 0 0.6 is true, and then as the pallet goes through, it will go false. And as it goes by, the input will return to true again. And then it resets the M0.2 internal bit. But let's keep looking and see what happens when pallets are traveling down the entry conveyor closer together. This one looks promising. There we go, a slight crash as the next pallet on the entry conveyor has been allowed onto the small loader conveyor before the present pallet has fully exited. Essentially what we're saying is while the loader is busy, then we need to stop anything entering the loader and that is where the loader busy internal bit is going to be used. So let's stop factory IO and make changes to the program. Again, this will take a while, so I'll speed up the footage. Right, looking at the entry conveyor on factory IO, if you can remember, loading starts immediately once a pallet is detected by the lowest beam. So let's zoom out a moment and look at the ladder logic. Let's scroll up to where the beam input pallet sensor detects a pallet and the loader starts. OK. And here we need to add a normally closed contact that will delay a pallet being loaded while the loader is busy. And this will be the loader busy signal M0.1. So what defines loader busy? Well, at this stage, there are only two conditions that define the loader is busy, and they are internal bits M0.2, transferring right, and M0.0, loading. If we were transferring left as well, there would be a third condition, and we will see that in the next video. So let's scroll back down to the transfer network and add some more code in. Let's add another branch and add two normally open contacts in an OR configuration that will energize an output coil. The two normally open contacts being the transfer right 
and the loading internal bits. That's fine, with the output being the loader busy signal. Now we can scroll back up to the loading network and add the required normally closed contact and then give it the loader busy signal address M0.1. Okay. Let's now download the program to the PLC, then go into monitoring mode and start up factory IO and see what happens. Let's zoom out a little so we can get the bigger picture. So far, so good. I'm just waiting for pallets closer together to come in. Okay, that's not happening. So let's stop factory IO and set up the emitter to emit more boxes closer together. Then we can start up factory IO again. That's better. The boxes are closer together. Let's see if the program functions correctly. Oh. The loader is busy transferring to the right and so the entry conveyor stops. Perfect. Let's see if it works on the next pallets. Fabulous. So let's stop factory IO and go offline. Right, that's it for this video. And in the next video, we will modify the PLC program to start and stop the right exit conveyor when required so that it doesn't have to run continuously. And after that, we will also modify the program to allow small boxes to go to the left as well as large boxes to the right. Again, if you like what you've seen and would like to see more, then please click the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you shortly.